Hi guys, this is the first video of a series I will be doing. Uh, I want to make sort of a guide uh, for beginners about digital illustration in Procreate and um, each video of the series will be about some different, different aspects of working with Procreate, uh, which is a program I use for my personal and um, client work and I use Procreate every single day. In this series uh, I thought we could talk about uh, tools in Procreate, some basic tips, drawing advice, how you can uh, speed up your workflow, how you can simply work better and how you can feel more comfortable uh, in the app. And today we are going to talk about um, yeah, all, the, all the basics and how to start with Procreate. Also, if you are already familiar with the, with the app, uh, I hope there will be some things that maybe you find interesting. So, in order to be able to work with Procreate, you need to have a device that is compatible with uh, the app, with the software. And uh, I have noted uh, which exactly which iPad models work with Procreate, and those would be all iPad Pros. Um, the last iPad Air uh, and the last iPad Mini. Um, the important thing for you to know is that the cheaper models don't support the Apple Pen, um, so you should always pay attention if uh, the model you are interested in supports uh, the Apple Pencil and check it in the store if you're interested in getting one for yourself. Uh, you can get and download Procreate from Apple Store for $10 and this is a uh, one-time only payment. There are no other costs, all the upgrades already come with the price um, and it's super cheap. It is really cheap for uh, having in mind the kind and quality of work you can, you can make with that. Um, to give you an advice, I would always recommend getting iPad with a better storage capacity uh, because the higher DPI of your work, the higher the quality of your work, the more space it will take and eventually you will run out of it. Um, also, if you are planning on saving time lapses um, from your illustration process, it will also take up more space. So let's talk about some basic functions in Procreate and the general workflow. Um, the question I receive the most is about um, canvas size and quality of the artwork. What do I choose? Uh, and the most, um, the question that repeats the most is what do I do that my illustrations aren't pixelated? And um, I can say that there is only one thing that never changes is that I always work with uh, 300 dpi. Um, I never ever change it unless there is a request uh, to work in, I don't know, 150 dpi for example. Um, as for the canvas size, I, um, I think this is sort of a personal preference. I um, saw illustrators work on A4 canvases, um, on and five canvases, uh, having in mind how what will be the size of the final art print. In my case, my favorite canvases to work with um, are A4 size or 50 per 70. Those are the ones that I use the most. Um, always when I work on a personal project, because whenever I work for a client, I would just go with, uh, with the size that they need for, for, the, for each of the artworks I, I make. A very important thing to remember about is that the bigger the canvases in Procreate, the less layers will be available for you to work on. So if you are used to working on many, 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 many layers, um, you won't like for sure working on big size canvases. I like choosing 50 per 70 because uh, often my works are uh, printed as posters, so that's nice. 
but 50 per 70 will allow you to use I think between five or six layers in total so I know that for some of you it may not be enough um, I think A3 size if I remember correctly will give you about 22 23 layers uh, for me it's completely it's more than enough um, so I yeah I feel that this is a very luxurious number of layers but as I mentioned if you are used to working with like dividing all the artwork on separate layers it may be a challenge at first but I think um, it's something that we can get used to um, the best tip always and forever, not only for Procreate, but whenever you work, uh, whenever you produce digital work, is to remember about saving your files, because um, you never know when something might not go as planned. Um, Procreate, in my case, it doesn't uh, crash a lot. Sometimes it happens. Uh, luckily, it's not in a very... Luckily, it saves uh, your work up to that moment, mostly. But I will always, I will always make sure that um, your work is safe, is backed up, and it's safe and sound somewhere in the cloud. Um, some things, two things that are very um, typical for Procreate is that uh, undoing and going back to your previous steps is very easy. Um, you don't have a, like a history uh, window like for example in Photoshop but nevertheless it's very easy to undo. Um, something you should also remember about is that um, once you close your, your artwork, your file and want to go back to it, you can't undo your previous steps. Something that is very typical to procreate is that at all times you have to be aware of the limit of your canvas um, because whenever you move your illustration or a layer outside the canvas limit it will get cut um, this is something that for example doesn't happen in photoshop uh, it may be difficult for you to manage at the beginning especially if you work um, with small number of layers, but I think uh, you can get used to it with time. Um, a very easy and quick tip, but I think it might be useful. Um, I'm working on Procreate always using the light mode. You can choose between the dark uh, interface or a light one. I work always with light interface and I also recommend it because I think um, your eyes somehow can calibrate better colors of your artwork that way, especially uh, because iPad is already brightened up because of the of the light. Um, you will get less surprises when you print your artwork working with uh, light mode, I think. Another very cool option in Procreate is called Canvas Guides. Um, you can choose between different options uh, to help the best the artwork that you're currently working on. My two favorite guidelines are Grid, which helped me to get my lines straight and symmetry, which is the one that mirrors everything you do in real time so that you get a symmetric uh, illustration and design whenever you need it. A pretty cool thing also is that you can um, work both in Procreate and in Photoshop because uh, without any problems you can save your files as PSD and export it uh, to Photoshop format. I know you can also import to Procreate some of the Photoshop brushes, which I think is pretty nice, especially if you are used to or you like their brushes. So now I would like to answer some of your questions, like the most that I noticed um, repeat the most. And obviously the first one is why my lines look pixelated, why my artwork is pixelated, or why it's not sharp. Um, and you, you often ask that whenever you um, want to zoom in on your work or you print it out and you see that some parts are pixelated or the whole artwork is a little bit blurry. Um, 
I think there are some things that might help you uh, with that. The first one, as I mentioned, uh, always take care of the DPI quality of the artwork, of the canvas you work on. It goes without saying that if you choose a canvas size A5 and then uh, we'll try to print it out on A4, A3 size, it may not work out great. Another thing that um, might not be helpful when you are trying to preserve the best quality and sharpness of your lines is to avoid making layers bigger or, sm or smaller. Whenever you draw an element on, let's say, one layer and then try to make it bigger or make it smaller, it will lose quality. And this is something very important and uh, worth paying attention to. Um, I remember at the beginning uh, I thought it wouldn't influence the quality of the of the illustration of the layer and I remember that uh, after some time I realized that some parts of my illustration were really sharp and they were perfect and those parts that I um, that I was trying to make them larger or, or smaller that I changed their um, size um, you could literally see uh, the loss of quality and, and the lines were blurry and pixelated. Something that I do and I, and I think it helps me a lot with uh, speeding up my uh, workflow and my process is to um, save all my favorite brushes in one um, folder and I think um, it's always good to get to know all the brushes that Procreate already gives you choose your favorite ones and uh, kind of organize them so they're easily accessible for you and you don't have to scroll over all the menu uh, to choose and to access your favorite brush. Something that I love about Procreate is that you have very easily accessible three main tools that you use while drawing and those are the pen, the brush, um, the smudge tool and the eraser. So uh, a pretty cool thing is that you can use all of the brushes that you have in your saved in your library as whichever of those. So you can uh, paint with one brush, erase with the same brush, with the same texture, with the same uh, grain and shape. And uh, you can also choose your favorite one, a favorite brush to smudge or just to blend colors in or with each other. Another question that I receive a lot is how to avoid smudging um, the drawing with your hand or leaving or making marks or lines with your hand as you draw. And I think it can be easily fixed by disabling the touch actions. Um, so the only tool that will work as your drawing tool will be the Apple Pencil. Um, some of you also ask me how I import the illustration made in my sketchbook or anywhere else to procreate and um, I already made a video where I show you a little bit how I do it and it's nothing complicated I literally just take a photo with my iPad of the sketch I made and open it in um, in procreate file and that's it and I draw over that and then depending on how I want to use it or how I want to work with it, add another layers below or above that one, play with the opacity to see how what's the best way for me to work with that particular sketch. Um, I show a little bit of the process how I um, insert the photo to procreate in my previous YouTube video about drawing uh, my dog, making a portrait of him, so you can check that out. I will also leave a link below. Um, so that's all for today. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to share with you. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas about what you would like to see uh, in the next videos from the series, let me know below in the comments. If you have any questions, also please leave them below. I will do my best and try to answer them all in the next videos. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.